so hello everyone uh, welcome you all to this uh, new video so from this video onwards for 6th uh, sem students i'm going to start with the the very important subject that is the first subject uh, of the 6th sem uh, electronics and communication branch that is embedded systems the subject code is bec601 so we are going to cover all the five modules uh, in these sessions and uh, in around uh, 25 to 30 videos okay so uh, all these modules are a very very easy part okay we are in the first three modules we are going to see in detail about the embedded system okay module 1 is completely based on the introduction part of the embedded system where we are going to see the, how what you mean by embedded system what are some of the examples of embedded system and how these embedded systems are classified applications elements everything as mentioned here the topics and uh, module 2 and 3 are some core part of the embedded systems okay uh, what is what are inside those embedded systems and module 4 and 5 are mainly based on the arm processors okay arm processors okay we are we are we are we are going to see the introduction about arm processors in module 4 and in module 5 we are going to see some of the instruction sets which is there in the arm processor okay so those things we are going to cover it in uh, the upcoming sessions so coming to this module now module 1 the name of the module according to the syllabus is introduction to embedded system okay so in this module we are going to cover these topics as mentioned here okay so this pdf is there right that i am going to put it in the video's description so you don't need to worry you go and access from the description uh, the link would be there okay download it and uh, you could uh, access this pdf okay so topics are topics covered in this module one are embedded versus general computing system the differences the classification of embedded systems based on the different different kinds of the varieties of the systems available in the industry major applications and purpose of these embedded systems elements which is involved inside an embedded system with the need block diagram and explanation differences between some of the important uh, terms such as risc and cisc okay harvard and princeton or von neumann arch architecture big and little indian formats so these things we have already discussed in the fourth sem microcontrollers you had these topics okay just we are going to brush it up once again because in the core embedded systems these things are very important risc and cisc that is the reduced instruction set computing and cisc is the complex instruction set computing that also we are going to discuss in detail next is memory that is rom versus uh, ram types sensors actuators optocouplers then communication interfaces that is i2c spi okay inter integrated circuits that is i2c spi that is serial peripheral interfaces irda bluetooth wifi zigbee etc okay so these are the topics which we are going to cover in this module so first introduction part what is an embedded system uh, in simple way an embedded system in general what we could be telling is it works it makes the human task easier okay due to this embedded system the human task Uh, in daily life would be very very easy and it would be very very useful for human beings for example if you take a vacuum cleaner one simple example of an embedded system what it does is it does the work of sucking the unwanted stuff or the waste okay that uh, if you do manually it takes a lot of time but if you use that vacuum cleaner instead of doing manually then it would be reducing the time okay it reduces the time consumption and uh, it uh, it would be very helpful in this is the basic definition of an embedded system according to the uh, format the embedded system is an electronic electromechanical system which is designed to perform a specific function and is a combination of both hardware and software okay Th this thing you should be keeping in mind that is an embedded system is the combination of both hardware as well as software some of the few examples are mentioned here electronic toys mobile handsets washing machines air conditioners automotive control units set top box dvd players etc so these are the some few of the examples of an embedded system which we use in our daily life embedded systems are unique in character and behavior and they are with specialized hardware and software components okay next is the difference between embedded systems and general purpose computing system okay what are these general purpose systems and embedded systems so let us see the difference here the, the one main difference is a system which is a combination of generic hardware and general purpose operating systems for executing variety of applications would be coming under this uh, general purpose system a system which is a combination of special purpose hardware and embedded os that is the operating system for ex for executing a specific set of applications okay it has a limitation of applications okay it is not applied for all 
the systems as compared to the general purpose systems okay next is it contains a general purpose operating system may or may not containing contain an operating operating system it depends on its functioning applications are alterable that is programmable that it that is that the applications which we provide to the system could be changed or replaced okay but in case of embedded system the firmware of an embedded system is pre programmed and it is not alterable okay not alterable means as i have told you once you give an instruction set or data to that program okay you cannot change it because if you change it the functioning would be completely changed throughout the system okay performance is a key deciding factor on the selection of the system okay always faster is better in case of general purpose system application specific requirements are there in case of embedded system like performance power requirements memory usage etc are the key deciding factor application specific means it does not work for each and each and every part of the system okay for what system it is applicable for that only it would be working in such in a certain amount of in a certain way okay for example if you take an example of air conditioner uh, air conditioner that is ac what it does it it uh, makes the environment cooler by providing cool air okay that is done uh, you cannot expect an air conditioner to do a task of a washing machine or vice versa okay that is the meaning of this application specific next is less not at all tailored towards reduced operating power requirements of power management highly tailored okay next is response requirements are not time time critical for certain category of embedded systems like mission critical systems the response time requirement is highly critical need not be deterministic in execution behavior execution behavior is deterministic in case of embedded systems okay so this question is very important one guys okay i'm just putting a tick here okay so which and all i'm putting tick guys all of them are very very important ones okay so you need you need to be looking at them so this question would be multiple times repeated okay so you could be learning this history of embedded system so that is not there so let us come to the classification now classification of embedded system is based on the following criteria that is based on generation based on complexity and performance requirements based on deterministic behavior and based on triggering okay classification uh, based on generation so you know that in the upcoming uh, years and in the previous years we had a certain set of generations if you could take an example of the laptops we had different generations okay so like that we have first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and nowadays we are living in the 5g technology that is the fifth generation okay so these are different generations so first generation means the early embedded systems that is the uh, if you take the early 2000s or 2002 2000 to 2005 the first generation would be appearing in that range the early embedded systems built around 8 bit microprocessors like 8085 z80 and 4 bit microcontrollers for example digital telephone keypads okay this this comes under first generation second generation is scada systems or scada scada systems they are more complex and powerful than first generation okay some extra features are added to the embedded systems in order to enhance its performance okay again uh, the generation by generation it gets uh, uh, improved okay so that's why in third generation again application specific instruction set processors like uh, digital signal processors and application specific integrated circuits are added to the second generation uh, systems in order to enhance its performance for example if you take the example of robotics media these comes under the third generation fourth generation again embedded system built in system on chips that is socs reconfigurable processors and multi core processors they are highly complex and very powerful for example uh, smartphones which we are using right now generally it is of 4g but uh, nowadays the smartphones are also adapted to the 5g technology that is the fifth generation okay so in the syllabus they are mentioned only from 1 to 4 so it's better if you read these things okay next is embedded systems classification based on complexity and performance requirements okay complexity and performance it is different uh, they are different they are they are varied with respect to different technologies that is small scale medium scale and large scale complex okay so these points are all important ones you can make a note of it okay next is embedded systems classification based on the de deterministic behavior deterministic behavior means it the behavior won't remain constant okay it would be varying from time to time based on the applicable for real time systems okay for real time systems it would be having a certain set of uh, application and uh, following that application it could be working with respect to the 
what requirement that uh, embedded system is uh, needed okay so that is the main thing about the deterministic behavior next is embedded system classification based on triggering triggering means uh, how fast it reacts okay whenever we uh, uh, whenever we on a switch for example if you take a simple example of a fan if you make the switch on the fan starts rotating okay that is based on triggering we, if you give a certain amount of trigger the embedded system would be working okay you can see that simply it is reactive in nature okay yeah whatever action the user provides the same thing the reaction that the embedded system would be getting okay that is based on triggering these are some of the major applications of uh, embedded system areas that is uh, consumer electronics household appliances home automation and security systems automotive industry telecom computer peripherals computer networking systems healthcare measurement and instruction banking and retail card readers if you see this these and all are the areas okay you, everywhere the embedded systems are used guys but these are the major areas where these embedded systems are highly used and uh, it makes the uh, tasks very very easier in corporate life okay so these things come under the corporate life and all these uh, applicable areas are very very important in the real life scenarios okay next is a uh, one more very important uh, topic guys and uh, multiple times repeated questions that is a uh, purpose of embedded systems okay what are the purpose of embedded systems each embedded systems is designed to serve the purpose of any one or combination of following task so these are the purposes that is data collection storage and representation data communication data processing monitoring control and application specific user interface okay so these are the main purposes let us see one by one in detail first is data collection storage and representation that is embedded system designed for the purpose of data collection performs acquisition of data from the external world okay data collection is usually done for storage analysis manipulation or transmission it can be analog or digital okay data collection means we provide a different different data sets for different embedded systems and the collection of data sets would enhance the performance and the stability of that embedded system okay embedded system with analog data capturing techniques to collect data directly in the form of analog signal whereas in case of digital data the collection mechanism converts the analog signal to digital signal okay for analog it is directly given and for digital if you want to get the digital output we should be converting that analog to digital after that you would be getting the what proper output is required for digital signal if the data is digital it can be directly captured by digital embedded systems okay a simple example you could be taking a, of a digital camera okay a digital camera is a typical example of an embedded system with data collection storage and representation okay the see normal cameras digital cameras we use right those are the simple examples of data collection that is uh, if you take a photo that photo would be stored inside that camera and whenever you want we can access it based on our requirement okay next is data communication embedded data communication systems are deployed in applications ranging from complex satellite communication system to simple home networking systems embedded data communication systems are dedicated for data communication okay data communication can happen through a wired interface like ethernet uh, rs232 usb ieee 1394 or wireless interfaces like wifi bluetooth zigbee etc okay network hubs routers switches modems modem stand for modulator demodulators guys are typical examples for this dedicated transmission uh, embedded systems which is used for communication purposes okay communication purposes means the connection interconnection okay for example if you take the wifi connections or bluetooth connection what it does it connects the devices where the proper communication would be happening between the two devices okay that is the main thing of the data communication next is data processing embedded systems with the signal processing functionalities are employed in applications demanding signal processing like speech coding synthesis audio video codec transmission application etc computational intensive systems for example it employs the digital signal processors that is dsp data processing means the processing work of data that is the uh, what to say what when whatever the data is provided to the embedded system right that data would not be the same 
uh, when we get our final result that is it would be done some processing is done for example if you want to edit a picture what it does the features would be provided to edit the picture and based on that the processing would be done inside that uh, picture itself and we would be getting the final result as some enhanced or some improved version okay so that is the main thing of the data processing next is data monitoring embedded systems coming under this category are specifically designed for monitoring purpose uh, they are used for determining the states of uh, vari uh, some variables using input sensors they cannot impose control over variables for example ecgs that is electrocardiograms machine for monitoring the heartbeat of a patient is a typical example for this this is one very important example guys ecg to monitor the heart rate you see right uh, in the whenever a system whenever a patient is uh, in the hospital that one monitor would be there we should be uh, uh, monitoring the heart rate that is the what to say the zigzag lines indicate that the heart rate is uh, moving in a, a smooth manner okay so that is a simple example of a data monitor okay measuring instruments like digital cro digital multimeter logic analyzers these are some other examples of data monitor next is data control okay embedded systems with the control functionalities are used for imposing control over some variables according to the changes provided in the input variables okay embedded system with control functionality contains both sensors and actuators okay for controlling the data we should be requiring uh, the functionality in order to work it in a smooth manner we need both sensors as well as actuators sensors are connected to the input port for capturing the changes in the environment variable or measuring variable okay the actuators connected to the output port are controlled according to the changes in input variable okay for example for data controlling you could be taking a simple example of an air conditioner the controlling of data how it does if you want uh, the temperature to be much cooler what we do is we reduce the temperature right and if you want to uh, uh, temperature to be not to be cooler we increase the temperature so that is a simple example you could be giving for a data controlling system that is air conditioner okay washing machine or uh, what to say fridge uh, how much cooling you want everything uh, the controlling part okay next is application specific user interface okay i have already told uh, in uh, during the differences okay what do you mean by this application specific application specific means uh, it works for a certain kind of application in a certain manner for example if you take an example of a washing machine what it does is it uh, uh, its main use is to wash clothes okay according to that it provides water everything and all air conditioner it uh, makes the area cooler okay application specific you, you cannot expect an air conditioner to do a task of a washing machine or washing machine to do a task of an air conditioner right so that is the meaning of application specific okay so this was about the purpose guys of embedded system so the elements of embedded system we are going to discuss in the upcoming video okay so that's all guys for this video so hope you understood something in uh, today's uh, video we have uh, started with the uh, definition of embedded system some of the real time examples of embedded system embedded system classification based on generation deterministic behavior and all and uh, we have seen the embedded system classification uh, purpose of embedded systems okay in all the fields you have seen how the embedded systems are worked application specific you we understood what do you mean by application specific okay so that's all for this uh, video guys so hope you stayed uh, till here and uh, listen to this video so this uh, pdf would be there in the description you go and access it so in the next video we are going to continue with this module one only okay this module one is completely based theory guys but uh, if you understood if you understand this is purely understanding subject you no need to buy heart okay if you understand right in own words you can write it okay this module one is very easy so that's all guys we'll see you in the next video like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting thank you